What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Sartorial Wealth Channel. It's time for our September financial recap. Now we've had some major updates from the Bank of Canada, the US mortgage market, of course stock performance and real estate trends. So let's dive in. All right now before we begin my obligatory disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered to be financial or investment advice. Always do your own research and consult with a professional advisor before making any investment decisions. Also, while we might discuss some political related events that could impact financial markets, these views are not intended to reflect any personal or political endorsements. Now let's get started. In Canada, inflation hit the bank's 2% target for the first time in over three years. This led to three consecutive rate cuts, bringing the key interest rate down to four and a quarter percent. Now, Governor Tiff Macklem aims to keep inflation steady between one and 3%, but more rate cuts may be on the horizon, depending on, of course, economic data. Now, CIBC predicts a potential 2% drop by mid-2025. Now, the next rate decision is coming up on October 23rd. We're all going to be watching. Right now, over in the United States, the Fed's recent 0.5% rate cut has made waves in the housing market. Now, mortgage applications has surged 11% the week after the cut, following a 14.2% spike the week before the cut. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate hit a two-year low at 6.13%. Homeowners are taking advantage of refinancing with applications up 20%, translating to a potential savings of about $300 a month on a $300,000 loan. All right, now turning to the stock market, September saw gains across most major indices. The Dow Jones rose about 0.8%, while the S&P and NASDAQ showed positive momentum thanks to the Fed's rate cut. But with October's historic volatility, especially in election years, let's keep an eye out on these markets. The average October losses for the S&P 500 are about 0.9%, and the Russell 2000 tends to drop by around 2.4%. Now the second quarter GDP growth hit 3% with Atlanta Fed forecasting 2.9% for Q3. While inflation is cooling, it's still above the 2% target in the US, which could shape the Fed's next moves. Now we're gonna be watching key market movements. The S&P 500 is down about 0.13%, the Dow Jones is up about 0.43%, and the NASDAQ has dipped by also about 0.43%. Meanwhile, back in Canada, the housing market remains kind of mixed. With August, resales were flat, up about 1% month over month, but down about 2% from last year. Price trends have also subdued, with the MLS price index down about 4% year over year. National listings are up about 19%, but 10% below their historical average. Calgary and Edmonton are seeing supply increases, while Toronto, of course, has declined. Inventory stands at about 4.1 months, below the five-month long-term average, signaling a slightly tighter market. A renovation spending in Canada has reached a whopping $300 billion from 2019 to 2023, an 8% jump compared to previous five years. In cities like Toronto and Vancouver, renovations and infill developments are pushing single-family home prices and transforming older neighborhoods. However, building permits for single-family dwellings have dropped 24% in these cities compared to the prior period. All right, now let's talk gold. The World Gold Council has highlighted the Fed's rate cut, making gold more appealing as a non-yielding asset. With further rate cuts anticipated, analysts have expected support for gold prices in the medium to longer term as it becomes the preferred hedge against economic uncertainty. And finally, the US presidential election is heating up. Kamala Harris has a slight lead over Donald Trump in national polls with about a 3.3 point lead. Pulse the debate, of course. Now, battleground states are tight with Harris leading in key states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. So this race could really go either way and it's gonna be a tight race no matter what. All right, now that wraps up our September financial recap. Once again, this video is intended for informational purposes only and should not be taken as investment advice or any form of political endorsement. Always seek out professional guidance before making any financial decisions. And remember, the views shared here are meant to be neutral and data-driven, not my personal opinion. Don't forget to hit that share and subscribe button and like for more financial updates. Until next time, please stay safe out there. Bye for now.